Welcome to Get Real with Andy. This episode is about tolerance. You know, tolerance is a virtue. When we get along with each other, you know, accept our differences, tolerance is a good thing. But there is a point where tolerance is no longer a virtue. And not only isn't it good for us, it's not even good for the person whose bad behavior we're tolerating. I mean, I'm going to state some obvious things here, but tolerating abuse is not a virtue. That's a really good example of when tolerance doesn't help anything, and it's not right. You know, what's the difference between tolerating something and just eating it for the sake of pseudo-harmony or something? Yeah, you know, I'm raising my hand as somebody who's been guilty of that in my relationship life. And I think there's a certain point, and I counsel couples, where the tolerance level needs to go down, not up, because that's how you retrain somebody to cut out bad behavior. You know, the same thing is true about our own bad behavior with our own self. You know, to tolerate a, a bad relationship with food and bad behavior, that's not helping you know, we're not supposed to punish ourselves, but we're supposed to retrain ourselves and practice better habits. It's the same thing, you know, in relationship. You don't want, you're not helping your partner by tolerating stupidity. How do you navigate intolerance? You know, when is it time to lower the bar in terms of what's acceptable? Is there really ever a good time to do that? If my partner's going through a crisis or something, I have to tolerate that, you know, because I'm in a committed context here and it makes sense to not have everything I want all the time from my partner just because that's healthy tolerance, you know? That's why wedding vows will often say in sickness and in health through the good times and the bad, that's the kind of healthy tolerance I'm talking about. But when it comes to uh, abuse and disregard and, you know, if my partner, if even people that I'm not, not even just my primary partner, but even people I'm in relationship with, if they don't own their stuff, why should I tolerate that? Yes, to some degree, because they're going to stay in my peripheral circle but if I want people to be in my inner circle of intimacy, in my inner circle of relationships, tolerance needs to go down. I need to really set a high bar for myself, you know? And I am setting the bar at emotional integrity. I'm setting the bar at kindness. I'm setting the bar at a healthy sense of relativity, where just because things are the way they are for me doesn't mean... That's the truth for you and vice versa. That's the kind of tolerance that's healthy, you know, where there's relative understanding of our differences and acceptance. That's benevolent. But I'm telling you, when it crosses the line into non-benevolent, when it crosses the line into bad behavior that nobody benefits from, tolerance needs to go down. Okay, I hope you get my point. And obviously, you know, for everything, there is a season. There is a time to tolerate, and there is a time to be intolerant. And that needs to be tempered by wisdom, because there's lots of intolerance in the world. And I'm not suggesting that all of it is good. There's a lot of stupid intolerance. All right, you got my point. Tolerating abuse is bad. Tolerating differences in general is a good thing. Okay, I hope this is helpful. I know I talk a lot of common sense. I hope it's common sense. And I do know somebody famous once said, common sense is uncommon. So let's get to it and really be real with what we tolerate and be real with what's not tolerable to us. Thank you. Love you.